Have you ever correctly had a gut feeling to dislike someone who, on the surface, was a cool person that everybody else liked? My mom was a single mom and did the best she could. However, she thought it might be better to leave me with the neighbor than at home alone. From the age of six, I pleaded with my mom to let me stay home alone until she got home from work, that I would be okay. My intuition was right. The neighbor was convicted of multiple murders of single moms, one in two towns over when the DNA evidence came into being. He only liked to date and kill non-obese women. Fortunately, my mother was fat. Yo mama's so fat, she survived and lives a happy life. A pastor who was involved in the community outreach program for a prison, which I volunteered to for the first time, seemed very friendly on the outside but seemed really creepy to me. He kept putting his hands on my shoulder on that day and got my number from one of the volunteers and called me nonstop that night to say he is lonely and wants to talk. I was 14 at the time. I was a boy, 7 to 8. At a coffee shop I would go to with my parents, frequently there would often be a middle-aged Asian woman hanging out. She was a regular, the baristas knew her, my parents were friendly with her. Sometimes I would play board games with my parents and her. She gave me the creeps, but I couldn't pinpoint why. My parents knew I didn't like her very much, but not the full extent. Anyway, the very first time I was with her without my parents there, they were starting the car or something like that, she tried to get me to come back to her house. She wouldn't take no for an answer and got pushy. When my parents came back, I told them what happened, and we never went there again. Apparently, when I was four or five, my grandma introduced me to some new boyfriend. Everyone liked him, but I would have nothing to do with him. Wrinkled my nose, wouldn't be left alone by him. I guess he just came into apartment one day and walked at her with something behind his back, said nothing. She got an eerie feeling and said, are you going to kill me? With a dead face stare, he came at her and she managed to jump over some furniture and get away. She's always been in great shape, running three miles a day until age 80. She got somewhere safe, called the police, and never saw him again. Good lord, I mean, sounds like Granny may have had uh, bad judgment of character, but, uh, hey, I guess uh, physicality made up for it. Good on you, Grandma. Kind of related. Not a person, but a dog. Years ago, I had a girlfriend who lived at home with her sister, parents, three dogs, and a cat. One of the dogs was a big, goofy lab that loved everyone. I mean everyone. Two-year-olds could climb all over him, and he loved it. Anyway, the sister had been seeing some guy for a while, maybe a month, and she's bringing him home to meet the family for the first time. The guy hadn't even come to the door yet. The dog was in the house and went ballistic. I had never seen anything like it. He went from a goofball to apex predator. Needless to say, he couldn't come in the house. They had to leave. About two weeks later, the sister comes home. He had slapped her and she ended it. She also found out that he beat his ex-wife before her. One of my husband's aunts has a German shepherd. He's a big, dumb, scared of his own shadow and fireworks type. He once knocked down a cousin and growled at her because he thought I was being rough with my kid. No, sweetie, he saw you being rough and protected the kid. It was literally his first time jumping on anyone, let alone knocking them over. He's seen us roughhouse and LARP. I would argue he knows the difference between real violence and play. He's a good dog and always gets table scraps from me now. And cuddles when there are fireworks. My mother's cousin is a vet out in a rural area. This dude makes bank and is a really super nice guy. He was very close with his elderly mom and dad. Sadly, his first wife lost a ton of weight and then felt that she was out of his league and left him. A few years later, he shows up to my mom's house with this Sophia Loren type, ten times out of his league. She was all sweet and sugar pie to everyone. I forgot what I did to pee her off, but it was an accident. But she broke character for just a second and let Cruella DeVille show through. I was a kid and she grabbed my arm and looked at me like she would kill me. Everyone said I was crazy, and mean, and that looks aren't everything, and that she loves him, like I was trying to sabotage his relationship. F me, right? Flash forward two years, she kicked his parents out of the house they were in for 50 years, sold their home against Will, stole their money, forced him to choose between them and her. Sadly, he chose her. She drained him, tore apart his family, and ruined the last year of his father's life. He died scared and miserable told his mother, just give me the money, you won't live long enough to use it. It broke her heart that her son just stood there. But Karma paid her a visit to the tune of acute leukemia and she died. His mother is still alive, in her 90s and doing pretty well. He's back in the fold, just sucks his father didn't get to see the end where everything went back to the way it was.
Well, in the Army, we moved into a new house in upstate New York. We were being neighborly and talked to a guy across the street. He had five kids, no wife. He also had multiple neighborhood kids playing in the yard. He told us we can always send ours over. He gave us both this horrible feeling, so we smiled and got the F out. About a year later, my wife told me, I was in Kadahar, that his kids were taken from him. He had been doing inappropriate things with them, at least ever since his wife died. My stepdad. On the surface, he seemed like a good guy. Went to church twice on Sundays and once on Wednesdays. Always helped out when someone needed help, whether it was something as simple as loaning five bucks to something as complicated as roofing a house. Had a good-paying job. Refused to smoke inside the house. When him and my mom went out on dates, he always made sure to bring home food for all of us and toys for the younger kids. Would randomly take everyone out to dinner or to the theater. Despite all of that, I disliked him from the moment I met him, even before he showed interest in my mom. People told me I was being paranoid, not to worry about. Fast forward a year, him and my mom are married, I just got a job and was waiting on my first paycheck to move out on my own. My manager gets a frantic call that I need to come home pronto. My stepdad had been secretly spending all of our bill money on pot. We were about to get evicted. The power had already been disconnected, water service was about to be, and stepdad tried to kill my pregnant mom. City council hired another medic. Older dude with long hair, not that that matters. He was new to the scene, recently completing the course. Guy was awesome to hang out with. Went to the bar with the younger EMTs, played video games, etc. At first, I thought it was cool, but as I observed his work, I was his superior and did his probationary eval, I noticed something was off. At the Prival Council meeting, I spoke openly about this in his 30-day review. I stated something was off. He didn't seem like a people person and generally the type that would do this job. They said that I had no grounds to state that he wasn't suited and that he did his job as described. I countered with the fact that when caring for people, being a people person is an unwritten rule and that doing your job without caring leads to mistakes, and in our field, a mistake means death. They weren't having it, so I finally said, look, in this job field, you need to learn to read people and in telling you that something isn't right here. City Council told me that basically I was jealous because he got along with the EMTs. Honestly, I could care less. I'm not in this job for them. Fast forward a month, and I get a call from an ER about an hour from us. They said that their report said the patient was administered 80 milligrams of drug X. The patient denied receiving it, and since they couldn't figure out why the F the medic would have even given it, they ran a tox panel on him which showed that he did not receive it. The doc told me normally he'd let it slide as an error and ask me to speak to him about accuracy, but he felt something was off. I thanked him and after hanging up, pulled the trip sheets. Right in the run report, it was the drug, the amount given, and the time. I pulled up the narcotics log. It showed drug given and replenished along with the tag numbers. Next, I called a friend of mine who was a local cop and was off duty at the time. He came over and I opened the other medic's narc box. Sure enough, it had been opened and replaced. We then went through his logs for the past two months and he had been working and located at least 12 times drugs had been given when probably not needed. I called the ER doctor back and explained to him and his exact quote, here's my personal phone number and our lawyer's number. I'll fax you over a written statement along with the test results. I'll see if we have anything on other patients he brought in. My buddy then called dispatch to tell the council members there was an emergency at the station and they need to come in. When they got there, we showed them all the evidence and what we suspected. Within 15 minutes, we not only had the DA approval, but also a judge sign an arrest warrant. Turns out the dude admitted to having a 20-year painkiller addiction that he ran out of sources, so he figured being a medic would give him easy access. He even told the drug he was worried that he would have killed someone just for the meds. At the trial, I got asked for what resolution I wanted. I told the judge, being a paramedic, I've seen how drugs change a person and that I don't hold him fully responsible. On my recommendation, he got three months in a locked drug rehab facility followed by six months of house arrest. Four years later, the dude is clean and runs a fundraiser to help raise money for the end to provide anonymous Narcan services and drug awareness programs. Today, this guy would be an honored member of my crew. Addiction literally changes people. The end result is I now am solely responsible for hiring the medics, reviewing, and dismissal. I no longer need to justify to counsel why someone was dismissed. This job is one where a gut feeling decides someone's fate.
honest to God, OP, good on you for suggesting to the judge that the guy just get help and turning his life around. See, that's awesome. I like to hear positive things sometimes. A few years ago, when I was still in college, I took a summer job at a movie theater. I met a lot of really cool people there, including my significant other. But there was this one guy who always gave me the creeps. We'll call him Drew. He was friends with almost everyone, including my significant other, and had been for years. We'd attend the same parties, and he'd do all these little things that would feel like red flags to me, but apparently not to anyone else. Fast forward about a year. I no longer work there, significant other and I have been together for maybe a year, and he has been promoted to manager. Drew has also been promoted to supervisor. It should be noted that there were a lot of teenagers employed at this theater. One day, two of the younger girls come into the office, if they were 18, they were only just, to talk to my significant other. They tell him they're sorry because they know my significant other is friends with Drew, but they have to tell him something. The younger one tells him that a few weeks prior, she was sitting alone in the break room eating her lunch. Drew walks in and says to her, do you touch yourself? She doesn't answer. He says, because if not, you should. I think he said more, but my significant other is so furious when he told me that story that he was having trouble telling it. My significant other fills out the report for the four girl and passes it on to the general manager, who then informs him that Drew had five counts of S harassment on his file already. But corporate loved him, so they could never fire him. So my significant other never spoke to Drew again. Last I heard, he was fired, removed from his job at a brewery by security for S harassment. Many of our other friends are still very close with him. I don't understand it, but I'm just thrilled to have that creep out of my life. Please like and subscribe if you've made it this far. I hope you'll enjoy the rest of the video and have a wonderful day. Some girls started talking to me on the bus ride home. I thought there was something off about her, but my parents, who are inherently optimists, told me to be nice and hang out with her. They even invited her over for dinner a few times. She lived about a four-minute walk away from me, so it was hard to come up with excuses not to hang out. We eventually hung out a few times, and I found out that she was a foster kid and had gotten bounced around a lot. She was also on a lot of medication for bad joints, bipolar disease, and a few other things. She was almost 18. Well, anyway, it turns out she was having an affair with the father, and they plotted together to kill the mom so that they could be together. They made sure to plan it during a time when the dad was out of town. The girl ends up stabbing her foster mother to death, and the family's biological daughter is the one to call 911. They put the 911 tape up online, and it was the worst thing I've ever listened to. Too long didn't read, strongly urged by my parents, previously forced, to hang out with a girl on my bus. She ends up having an affair with her foster father and stabbing her foster mother to death because the dad convinced her to. Their 14-year-old biological daughter witnessed the whole thing. My sister's boyfriend. I just immediately found him to be very fake and disingenuous. But the rest of the family loved him and found him very charming. He owned a running store franchise that was more successful than the original store and was also doing well trading on the stock market. He sold the store back to the owners for a ton of money to focus on the stock market, but this was around the time of the market crash. So to help with that, he worked at the store as a salesman. They eventually got married and bought a huge house, and that's when the cops came knocking on the door to their large home with a view. He wasn't rich. He never owned the store. He was only ever a worker and had been stealing cash from the registers slash products and selling them on eBay. The divorce came quick after that. I have a similar story. Sycophant Jeremy, a weasley-looking younger dude I worked with at a music shop in the UK. He was the perfect employee, early to work, stayed late every day. He'd fix things and tinker about being all helpful when there were no customers, and I was sitting around playing the expensive keyboards. I always knew he was hiding something inside. But the managers loved him for the reasons above. Had nicknames for him and crap. And then I left the job. Fast forward a few months, I go in for some guitar strings, and Jeremy's not there. Jeremy had been stealing those expensive keyboards and high-end audio equipment. That's why he was staying late all the time. He was loading the gear into his mini out the back of the shop. He'd been at it for ages. He got sent to court, and last I heard, he was paying back incremental installments of thousands of pounds worth of stolen goods. He got caught because he had left his eBay account logged on to the manager who loved him's computer. And all the gear on there tallied in reverse chronological order. 
with the stuff that had been going missing. That was my chance for an I told you so, but Gordo looked hurt enough by it already. One of my brothers was dating this girl, and everyone else had met her several times before I did since I was off at college. So the first impression I get of her is when she shows up at her house and just walks right in. Doesn't knock, doesn't let anyone know she's in there. Just walks herself in and sits on the couch. So when I come down the hallway into the living room, she has this super vapid smile on her face. I just had this weird gut instinct that she was hiding something from everyone and was going to fight to the death to keep it hidden. I expressed to my mom that she gave me a weird vibe and I got told to stop being jealous. But, long story shorter, she ended up having an entirely other relationship and life with another guy three hours away. How did your brother find out? Her other guy came to see her one day and she told my brother that he was an old co-worker. So my brother said he'd take them out to lunch and she lost her crap and it all unraveled. She admitted to everything from using my brother for money to having this whole relationship for their entire relationship. Oh, come on, you couldn't even go out to lunch to hold up your lie? But she wasn't trying hard enough, come on. The girl and I used to work at the same ski hill, and the place was pretty much full of seasonal employees, revolving door status. Anyway, she got this new dude in her department that everyone thought was a super nice guy. I did not trust him. There was just something about the way he talked to female employees that just seemed weird. He was trying to gain their trust way too quick. I made my sentiments known to my girlfriend and other friends, and they thought I was just being jealous or something. I worked part-time out of town at the time, and he'd always ask me what days I was gone. It was weird. He also didn't have a car, so sometimes my girlfriend would give him a ride, and he'd ask her to hang out at our place when I was out of town. She declined. So, at the end of the season, a female friend of ours and this kid decide to rent a place together. They weren't dating. And, as they're in the final steps, federal marshals show up to arrest him. Turns out he had been on the run for over a year from kidnapping and violating a girl in a different part of the country. His family had been helping him, and he took the name of his brother while on the run. Filling out the housing application somehow tipped off the marshals. Trust your instincts. Please leave your story in the comments. I would love to make a video on them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.